Uh, good evening, America. Mike Morini, your favorite presidential hopeful for the 2024 race. Coming to you this evening to talk to you about leadership. I have my two dogs here. Um, it's well after midnight and they're a little rambunctious right about now. Um, so bear with me. Okay. I'm supposed to be on the couch with that anyway. Um, so leadership. Um, the important thing to remember about leadership is no one is that. No one's born a leader. You have to learn it. Um, there is a trial and error period to it. Before you really get good at being a leader, you have to learn to be a good follower. Uh, but also takes lots of experience. Um, I came into the army and I didn't want to be a leader. I didn't want to get promoted too far. I was okay being a follower. Um, I didn't like giving classes. I didn't like, ow! Well, scratch that. Um, I was nervous to give classes. I was nervous to get in front of large groups of people. Um, you know, I didn't know a whole lot. Uh, but over the years, I've learned more. I was forced to give classes. And I got, not only did I get good at it, uh, speaking in public, but I learned... Hopefully if I ever have a rally or whatnot, I don't have my dogs doing spin moves in front of me and barking at me for attention. Come on, Juliet, come here. She's jealous that Jack's sitting next to me. So anyway, um, I found myself in a position uh, after I left active duty and wound up in the reserves, I found myself in a position where uh, you know, my detachment, my section of soldiers, didn't have any NCOs, we didn't have any sergeants, and all of our officers were elsewhere. So, I was forced to step up. Um, you know, much like now, I looked around at who I was with, and I was either senior to them, or they weren't passing the metrics, or they were just screwing around. The other, uh, the other enlisted members from my detachment. So I stepped up and it was a little bit of a mess, but ultimately I got my first taste of leadership. Um, I had had authority before, but now I had leadership. Um, and I started to learn from there. I developed a knack for it. I very quickly learned that the best way to get people to follow me was to treat everyone fairly both in assigning tasks that were good and tasks that were bad. Um, you know, there's a lot of people over the years, a lot of soldiers over the years that I've led. Um, fair share didn't like me as a person. I'm grading, uh, abrasive. Um, I speak my mind and I can be very blunt and insensitive. But I always treat people fairly. So while they might not have liked me as a person or my myriad of character flaws, um, they liked me as a leader. And I've had them be comfortable enough to tell me that. And I can respect someone who is honest in this way. So I treated them fairly. I addressed their problems. I adhered to the regulation and laws that govern the things that we did. Uh, in administering punishments and rewards, um, or awards, as lots of soldiers like to get, but I also kept, uh, you know, I cut them some slack when need be, gave them the leeway that they needed, and helped them develop and grow as soldiers. For some, that meant that they enlisted. For others, that meant that, you know, they their time in the military didn't suck as bad as it had to. Uh, it sucked less than it needed. It didn't suck any less than it needed to. Sorry. Um, like I said, it's getting late. Uh, so, as time went on, uh, I had to stick my neck out for my soldiers from time to time. Uh, this past year, 
like out of nowhere. Uh, I, you know, I had to go 20 years. I went 20 years without ever having to go to a hearing or be part of any sort of separation board. Um, but then last year I had three back to back. Um, you know, I stuck my neck out for a couple of guys and it wasn't too hard because they had earned it. You know, two of these guys that I stuck my neck out for were go-to guys. Um, the third guy I actually didn't stick my neck out for him. I just had to tell, had to be a witness. Uh, tell the truth is very easy. But for the other, the other two, um, you know, I stuck my neck out for a, a little bit. I went to bat for them. And like I said, they had always been my go-to guys, so they had earned that. So that's how I was fair to them. Now, when we compare this type of stuff to Washington, D.C. and our politicians there, that's what we have. We have politicians. These guys aren't leaders. They're the people who are going to tell you what you want to hear. They're the, the people who don't really care about you. They care about getting votes. So, yeah, you might be in their district, but if the majority of the people in your district uh, don't care about the things that you do, they're not even going to pay any attention to you. Um, and we need to get away with that, or away from that. So, right now we have Joe Biden. I'm trying to replace him. Honestly, I think that a random person off the street would do a better job than he's doing. Also, kind of feel like it's not really him doing anything. I feel like he's just being kind of told what to say by people he trusts, and he's saying it. And everything else that gets signed off on is either his wife or a handful of his aides around him. You're not supposed to be on the couch with that. And grab it and come right back. Or bark at his reflection. Whatever. So. That's not a leader. Uh, Trump was a great businessman. Uh, he did good things for the, the country. He was a boss, not a leader. Um, leaders in, their, in the trenches with their people. And uh, you know what? He really didn't set a good left and right limit. And what I mean by that is, you know, when I would get a new soldier, I would tell them, I would counsel them. Uh, I'd give them their expectations, what I expected from them things that they needed to do as well as what they could expect from me and that's not just you know you expect a kick in the ass from me if you don't do what I say that's hey I'm a, I'm available um, you know if I'm not available you, know, you can send me a text message you can send me an email um, if I don't you know if I'm not available you know here's the secondary method of contacting me you know here's the things that I'm gonna harp on here's the things that I'm gonna cut you some slack on you have to have the people following you and know what to expect from you so were I to uh, were I to get in the White House I would give America a counseling statement what I expect from America and what America can expect from me and considering I would be an elected leader it'd be mostly about what to expect from me which is the God's honest truth I'm not going to get up there and promise you anything. I can't fulfill. Anyway, this guy's driving me up the wall with his bone munching here. I just wanted to get a video out there because I haven't done one this week. Um, you know, I've been in a lot of arguments on Facebook recently. find it distracting uh, in a good way. And it's all just kind of a practice for me. So, if you haven't found me on Facebook... Michael Morini, I think you can spell that, you look at my channel, you see it, and Morini2024 on Instagram. So find me there. Uh, I, If you don't really care about politics and you just want to see dogs, I do post pictures of my dogs on Instagram. Uh, but Facebook is primarily political. So hope this video finds you well. God bless America. Like, subscribe, share, tell your friends, tell your family. I hope you love dogs.